Alright, this video will show you how to use Melodon to convert audio to MIDI files. Really good for remixes, extracting drum loops, and everything like that if you wanted to uh, turn anything into MIDI. Uh, so here's a little demo of um, how I used it recently. Alright, so right there I used it to extract the uh, MIDI information to turn into a bass line. So I'm going to show you how to do exactly what I did here. Um, I've got another instance of Ableton open, actually a few of them. Uh, and if you wanted to open up multiple instances of Ableton, all you have to do is go to the terminal and then type in open-n and then your, um, your file structure for um, your live application. Uh, so that's really useful. I use that quite a bit. Um, okay. So now I have the source audio right here, and I actually pitched that down a little. Yeah, I did pitch that down, but I bounced it down to audio, so you're not going to notice. So that's the original. All you have to do is drag Melodyne on top of it, and now what you're going to want to do is you want to go to Algorithm and make sure that it is in um, the respective algorithm that you need. In this case, Melodic is what I'm looking for. Uh, percussive would not be it because it won't separate the notes uh, and polyphonic is good for chords and stuff like that uh, so melodic it is and then I'm gonna hit the stop button to put the play marker right here I'm gonna hit transfer and then I'm gonna hit play then I hit stop and now you'll notice that it puts these, uh, like extracts the audio and it shows you exactly what note that it's on. And you can click it. Now, Melodon is actually used to um, like pitch correction and everything like that. So if you imagine that this is like a guitar or a voice or something like that, you can click the right tool. You can change this stuff and um, you know, pitch correct and everything like that, but that's certainly not what I use it for. Uh, now that we have this information, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to settings, save as MIDI, and this will save us a nice little two bar loop here. I'll call this Mercy MIDI. I'll save it in the, my little Melodon tutorial file here. So now that I've saved that, I've got a grand piano. I'm gonna actually disable this. I've got a grand piano located right here. So I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm just gonna put in that MIDI file that we just saved and you'll notice that it saves it just right so let's uh, let's take a listen here so if you did not like that note, I think I took that out of mine I just looped that I believe anyway I don't want to get into editing all that stuff, but just to show you that it does kind of work like that, um, I do kind of want to take a look and see. E -G -D. Yep. So yeah, I, I fumbled with it a little bit. Um, you will kind of notice that it has to, uh, you kind of got to massage a little bit, but it is very good at doing what it does. Here is another way to use it to extract um, drum loop information. So I've got these kicks right here. I'm going to do the same thing, just drop Melodyne right on top of there. I'm going to go to the algorithm, make sure it's set to percussive, hit transfer, hit play. I'm going to do the same thing here, but now you'll notice that it, it kept it all um, on the same line here, on the same note, and that's really good for um, drums, especially uh, single hit drums. I'm going to save that to MIDI. Save that directly to my desktop. Actually, I'll put it in here. Now I've got a drum rack loaded down here. I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to select 
it was they put it on A3 or the program did. So I'm going to move that down to a kick. And now you can hear. And obviously it matches that perfectly. Um, so when I when I was first starting getting producing, I would really use Melodon quite a bit to uh, figure out uh, drum patterns and everything like that. I thought that was pretty handy. Um, but yeah, if you all have any questions or anything like that, um, feel free to give me a shout. I'll post my email and everything like that down here. And you'll notice that Ableton has crashed. Uh, but you know that's how you open multiple instances of Live for doing things like this. I've also changed my Live icon. <laughs> I can tell you all how to do that too. Um, and the application that I used to make this tutorial was ScreenFlow. So give me a shout if you need anything. Thanks.